Oh, <laughs> we are <Hi>. live. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> and welcome to Friends in Fiction. Is your mind playing tricks on you? I don't <laughs> think so. Tonight, we gave Mary Kay, Patty, Christy, and Kristen the night off. And you will be joined by the fearsome foursome, and we have a wonderful night planned for you guys. First, we'd like to say happy Passover to everyone that celebrates. And we're just so happy that you guys are here to get all of the scoop for the spring summer season and our book club scoop <laughs> and podcast scoop. We have a lot of scoop tonight, so I hope you guys are ready. <laughs> and in true friends in fiction fashion, we should introduce ourselves as they do. I'm Lisa Harrison. I'm Brenda Gardner, co-host of the Friends in Fiction Book Club. <clears throat> I'm Meg Walker, the managing, managing director for Friends in Fiction. And I'm Ron Block, the host of the Writer's Block podcast. And I'm and also we are the co-host of the book club. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Lisa, coming in, <laughs> coming in at the end. Well, in. we're so excited to share this <laughs> night with you guys. So is anybody ready for a great happy hour takeover? Go ahead and start sharing in the chat what you're doing tonight and what everyone is drinking. Cocktails, mocktails, sparkling water, whatever you have. And magic potions. I think, <laughs> yes, magic potions. <laughs> and I'm going to ask Meg to share first. Sure. Well, uh, I just got back from Italy, so I'm basically Italian now, you guys. Um, right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we got hooked on the Aperol Spritz while we were oh, in yeah. Italy. Um, so that's what I'm having. And it's... Um, Yum. If anyone hasn't had one, they're delicious and they're addictive. And it's equal parts um, Aperol, which is like a semi-bitter um, liqueur, aperitif type of thing. Equal parts that and champagne, and then you top it with club soda and put an um, orange slice. And it's yum. Delightful. Yeah, it's refreshing. Can I pair the very first time I ever had an Aperol Spritz was with Mary Kay Andrews. Really? At her party for, it must have been, no, no, it was at Christie's launch party, but Mary Kay was there. It was at Christie's launch party for the wedding veil. And Mary Kay was there, and I had never had an Aperol Spritz, and we had one together, and it was so good. So oh, nice. I'm all about <laughs> that one. <laughs> uh, Lisa, right, so Lisa, well, what are you drinking? Well, I figured I'd do a little toast to our podcast drink connoisseur, Ron Block, and you, Meg, because we're all the Dirty Martini group. But I typically do vodka, dirty martinis. I do not drink gin. But tonight, I used a little Empress 1408 Ooh. gin. Ooh. If I pass out halfway through, we know why. But um, <laughs> and some vermouth and extra dirty with a little olive juice and blue cheese stuffed olives. Ooh, yum. Oh. Are you oh, proud? my goodness. I'm very proud. Very proud of you, my friend. That is that is something. Mm -hmm. mm. Well, I Good also flavor. am starting with a gin dirty martini, but it's in this it. glass that you can't really see, but it's got etching in it that says don't spell that into your computer. Right? It says is that what it says? I'm watching. You know, Friends in Fiction, writer's oh. block, host, Ron Block. It was given oh. to me by a really wonderful friend whose name rhymes with Briston. Oh. Wow, I wonder who that would be. So I have another little, I have another cocktail ever. thing for after Brenda's done. Oh, good. <laughs> well, I'm going to share my mocktail and a little story about it. I don't know if you can see it very well. It's, Yum. it's, I'm calling it a sunburst. Um, it's uh, grenadine and equal parts orange juice and sparkling water. Mm. And since I'm reading Burst by Mary Otis, I sort of coordin coordinated my drink to match. And I will tell you, it's the first time I've ever bought grenadine. And you should have seen me searching the, um, you know, <laughs> alcohol aisle. 
but the grenadine, it was quite the sight. But anyway, that's what I'm having. Were you texting also? <laughs> well, I tried to text Lisa, but my voice to text wouldn't work. And I was like, do they have grenadine at the grocery store? <laughs> does it? Does it ever? <laughs> it does. It so, wouldn't do it. Brenda's so it, it, it cocktail be a book in itself. <laughs> it, oh, it's going to be. It, it could I've been be. collecting them. Itself. Yeah, her autocorrect. <laughs> it is the bane of my existence. That's but okay. Anyway, so we Ron, did you day. have a drink? Oh, well, it's not me, really so. a demonstration, but it's kind of a little story. And um, if anybody was paying attention on social media, I had the distinct honor to meet uh, friends in fiction fame. Colleen Oakley was with me here in Cleveland, and she brought me right. this little little glass that says the mostly true story of tanner and louise so the cover of the book is there but what's so cool about it anybody who's read the book is going to get this and if you haven't read the book you will see it when you get it in the back there's two lines there's a line up here that says louise and there's a line <laughs> down here that says tanner and you could pick which one you fill Vodka oh. to the line that's appropriate for you. So I should have and, used my cup too. I forgot about that. It's so I cute. fell in love that's with her. Nice. I fell in yeah. love with her. I just she's, she's amazing. She's so great. Yeah, she's awesome, and she's my neighbor. <laughs> oh, I'm jealous of that. For sure. <laughs> cool, absolutely cool. Well, I was trying to pull up a photo, but I am having difficulty. That's all right. We will move on. Let me see one more time. Okay. Let's can see you? if I can share this. Oh, there Not it is. Me. And now it's there twice just to annoy me. There we are. <laughs> ah, yeah, there you guys are. Oh. There we are. <laughs> so Gosh, I love out. It. it was so fun. So fun. <laughs> She, I, did, I wasn't prepared to do it. She's like, we're going to sit down and have a conversation in front of everybody, right? And I went, uh, yeah, yeah, we are. Sure. Okay, sure. <laughs> Wing it. Oh, that's so funny. We did, we did great, though. It was great. Well, that is awesome. You know, I think given our some of our themes tonight, it would be nice if we could share some of our um, spring and beach reads since i don't know if if y'all are on spring break i don't have a spring break but i'm gonna pretend <laughs> i do <laughs> i'm with you i so, don't have one either yeah i don't have one but my mind i think is on spring break <laughs> <laughs> that's kind that of what explains I'm, it. Like, I'm gonna be kind of ethereal and and on break but um, I already shared that I'm I'm reading Burst now. But I'm my my pick for a spring beach read is ha is going to be um, have to us. be the upcoming <laughs> Summer of Songbirds with awesome. Christy Woods and Harvey. Nice. All right. That's always, that's so, good. Ron, what is your spring break beach read? Well, I've got a whole bunch of them, and actually. Um, yesterday, I learned about a whole bunch of um, some that I'm saving for our happy hour in May. But one of the ones that I was going to share actually comes out May 2nd. So we, it'll already be out by the time our thing comes. So I thought I'd bring it here and share it with you. And you can all get your pre-orders in for this book. And it's called Late Bloomers. And the author's name is Deepa Varadarish. And she's phenomenal. Somehow this is a debut book and it's about an American Indian family. And at the beginning, any, the beginning of the book, a father who's almost 60 is going out on internet dates with other Indian women to try to find somebody to pass the time with because his wife of 35 years left him. They have two adult children who um, also live other places and they have their lives. So the, the, the mom is kind of gone to work in a library. The, the dad's kind of retired, but he's still in the family home. The daughter's just a mess and she's having trouble. And the son looks like he's the perfect child. He's got a, a wife and a baby and all this stuff, but everything is not what it seems. And it's very dysfunctional. And a lot of things happen. The book is written so well because you get to know each character so deeply, but then they start to intertwine and interact because they realize that they aren't, they have just all become estranged. 
they're trying to and they like to dig into each other's life the daughter's very embarrassed of her dad internet date the son's like go for it but all these things happen that bring them all back together and they converge into this phenomenal story it's so well written i think she said it took her 15 years to write the book so it's uh, do that do that do that Eight bloomers sounds great i love it's that amazing. cover yeah, yeah good the one. cover's amazing that's okay. awesome that um, sounds good let's see yeah meg what about you so i have a boast to share well uh if we're talking spring break, I just, as I said, I just got back from Italy and I never, ever read a book in a single sitting ever. But we had a really long flight home and I mm -hmm. read um, The Silent Patient. Have you guys read that? I know it's old. Ooh, Alex, I no, I, it's Michelle on my Eddie's. list, though. Oh, Alex McAladies. I don't know. Michelades, McAladies. Oh. Well, I, I read it on the flight beginning to end and i couldn't put it down and i thought it was fantastic and i think it's wow. being turned into a show isn't it a oh good series? well it's hey. still on the bestseller list yeah, too i know it's still well, on the bestseller list now i know why it's freaking great um all right and then i have a few others pineapple street i know jenny jackson was just on the podcast and uh, mary Kay and ron had a great time talking to her that was a great podcast episode i'm dying to read pineapple street it just sounds super fun and juicy um, another one that's out now, in fact, just came out this week, is a novel by the lead singer from the Bangles, Susanna Hoffs, and it's called, oh. what is it called? This Bird Has Flown, and it sounds I so love the cover. Right? It sounds so nice. juicy. I don't know why it wasn't on our radar, like she, we should be having her on the show and we're not, but um, it's a debut novel and it's about music and love and redemption. It's supposed to be funny and steamy and it just sounds great. The reviews have been phenomenal. She actually, at her launch event at the Strand, played live Manic Monday in front of everybody. No. Oh, my talk. gosh. Yes. I, I like, love what? that song. I know. Um, and then two that are out in May that I can't wait to read. One we're going to have on the podcast. It's called The Daydreams by Laura Hankin. Um, Ooh. And that is described as Daisy Jones and the Six for the Britney and Justin era. So Ooh. it's about a popular teen show from the 2000s. and. They have a spectacular flame out and then they have a reunion show in um, 13 years later. And this is all about the the drama oh. that ensues at their reunion. Yeah, I'm all in. <laughs> I was right? all about that. That sounds like, did you read the, uh, the story of Opal oh and Nev? God. Yes, I did read that. Opal I loved and Nev that was so good. I listened to the audio, which was great because it was like full cast. But um, and then I'm oh, Dave, yeah, I love Daisy Jones. A, I'm putting a plug in for Stephen Rowley because who didn't love the Gunkel? I think it's one of the most I loved about it. books in our whole group, right? But um, the Celebrants comes I out. I just read it. Um, May 16th. You did? The new one? No, I just read the Gunkel. I was late oh. to the podcast. I just read it like, I've just finished it like two weeks ago. Oh, Isn't it hysterical? Book. And, I and so full of so heart much. too. Like I love it. So great. Well, I just new, fell in love with it. You're not as late. You're not as late to the party as me. I've got that coming up next. Oh, good. <laughs> um, then, then go back and listen to the podcast. He was on, I think, our second episode. Like yeah. he was on. Oh, I need to do that. Yeah. For the it was Gunkel. a great interview. Yeah. And now we're having him on the Wednesday show in the spring summer season. Um, Yay. But the new one is called The Celebrants, mm. and it's described as um, a big chill for our time. So it's a bunch of college besties who have regular reunions and the drama that occurs at the current one and that's all I know about it but I know it sounds great it sounds great Ooh, yeah and fun fact oh. he's married to a man named Byron Lane that also has a new book coming out <laughs> near there called Big Day Wedding and I'm halfway through Ooh. it and it's actually so good it's about this kid whose mom runs the farm or something she's very conservative but he's bringing his fiance home to tell her the whole story Oh, I love it. You can it. imagine, yeah. The whole, sounds I good. Jinx and Sue. What a couple. <laughs> I love it. Well, okay, I want, here's one thing your mind, oh. I want to say, <laughs> um, Christy is watching and she says, hey, rock stars, love you guys. Yeah, oh, love, love you. Guys. Hope you're enjoying your night off. <laughs> my, um, <laughs> my beach read, I had to go back to a classic my favorite beach read, and I don't reread books often, but I've read this one twice. And it was the first Mary Kay book I ever read, and it's Sunset Beach. And oh, I wow. love 
Ones that be so good. So good. So I don't, I lent it, but I'm going to share my screen. For those of you who looking to see if I had it at hand. Yeah, oh, that's geez. my that's my go to beach reader. If you there haven't go. read it, nice. Yeah. Your drink matches that one too. <laughs> well, I'm going to put in a plug for um, the Secret Book of Flora Lee because I know probably I all love... of you have already read it, but everyone out there who's watching, put that at the tippy top of your spring reads list. It is Patty is yes. at the top of her game. Top. It is so phenomenal. It is it's... right. It is just a beautiful story, so beautifully told. It, it's a book you yeah. just want to hug all the right. time. I mean, every time I think about it, I just want to. It feels like a hug. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Um, I'm waiting till right before book club, and it's been so hard because I want to read it, but I want well, it to be fresh. Because yeah, you're going to want to read it twice. Oh, I'm serious. So disciplined. I'm serious. You're going to want to read it twice. <laughs> okay, maybe I will. Maybe I'll read it this weekend. Yeah, don't wait. <laughs> well, I, and I like to do that. I like to read it and then kind of reread it, skim through again before we discuss it because it just keeps things fresher. But it's an amazing, just an, an amazing premise and amazing cover, the the whole deal. So I don't think I'm going to be able to wait either. I have not read it yet. I have been holding out a little bit longer, but I just don't know about that. <laughs> um, while we're um, as we're doing our book recommendations, if you um, our book club members, well, no, we're not on book club. We took over. I forgot. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah everything. For us. Friends and fiction members, if you want to share your favorite or upcoming uh, spring break and beach reads, please do in the chat so we can uh, see what everybody's reading. And can I ask in a poll meantime. question and ask them to answer that too and have each of you answer this yes. question too? Ooh, All right. So yeah. in library land, we're having a discussion because we think that when people say, beach reads it evokes a certain thing that's very easy breezy sit on the beach love it go through it you just put it down great great snap but there, there's a lot more to them now there's really deep stories that are attached to those so they're mm -hmm. thinking about switching what they're called to summer reading what do you all think oh hmm i think everybody's idea of a beach read is different like i can remember reading really deep kind of dark heavy books on the beach and as long as it's an absorbing story and it whisks you away okay. so to yeah. me that qualifies as a yeah. beach read. it doesn't ha have to have a beach on the cover or take place at the beach necessarily <laughs> or beach umbrellas or... right I think for me yeah. beach reads that's what I don't think of just like like the covers but it's always it's like a vacation book like they're on vacation or they're somewhere tropical so even Ooh. if I can't go I can imagine mm. being there because I'm not on spring break or I'm not, you know, I'm probably sitting at my desk. <laughs> um, so anything that has that tropical type, it could be a mystery, it could be a romance, but as long as it takes me away somewhere else as far as the location, then that would, I think that's how I would define Beach Read. That's awesome. I love that. I love I that. I like that too. Cool. What about you, Brenda? I used to think of a beach read as um, kind of what, I'm sorry, as kind of what you would, the beach scene, you know, the story is set at the beach. But as I continue to read more, I, I want it to be a story, like Meg said, that kind of takes me away in whatever fashion where mm -hmm. I have time to spend with the book and kind of savor it and be taken away to that place. So it's kind of changed over time. Yeah. Very cool. So how's that okay. for your poll? You. Yeah. That's great. No, I, I just was, it was a question that we all been talking about. So I thought I'd bring it to the masses. Yeah. Well, hopefully anyone who's watching in the comments, tell us what you think of Beach Read is. Yeah, I have a couple. Um, first, we have another special um, author watching. Mary Kay is watching. Oh, so hey. Yay! Hey, Mary we Kay. Over, we took over your job. <laughs> You're supposed to be off. Yeah. Well, um, hopefully she's still getting wine delivered to her. Yeah. I know, right? <laughs> um, Tammy says, I like beach read because it brings up visions of sunshine, waves, and umbrella drinks. Yes, I, I love an umbrella drink. Oh. That sounds like <laughs> Maybe there's room um, for both. Mary says, summer reading sounds so mandatory, like the book list they gave oh. you in grade 
or high school you were like homework uh, from over the summer that's a good point i didn't even think of that either well, I was such a nerd, I didn't mind being forced to read books. <laughs> I, know. I took it as a it's challenge. When you had, yeah, when you had to read books you didn't want to read, it was kind of like, ugh. That's true. Gen Z says, I love set- beach reads because I'm an escapist reader. Beach reads are a way of escaping to a place I've never been. Hi, Gen Z. Great point. <laughs> yep. A lot of people are Absolutely. making comments. Oh, cool. And Mary Kay says she's drinking Chardonnay right now. Woo-hoo! So cheers. Excellent. a girl. <laughs> yeah. I know. Look at those Attica. olives, Mary Kay. The the dirty martini. The dirty martinis. <laughs> oh goodness. Well, while what we're taking we a next, few Brenda? <laughs> while we're taking <laughs> a few sips, Meg, would you mind sharing? Because I know our um viewers definitely want to see this what's coming up at friends and fiction for april and may i would love to and where's patty with her drum roll when we um oh yeah. wait da, 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 da. i'm probably just as bad da, 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 da. <laughs> i've tried to do it but it doesn't work <laughs> all right well i'm super excited for the spring summer season it's going to be a great one you guys the the list of authors is just it's just a something else um but let's start with April and May. So April, the season premiere is April 19th. And right out the gate, we're having um, Brenda Novak um, to talk to us briefly about her book, The Seaside Library. And she's, I, I, if anyone follows her on social media, you'll you, you see that she's out on a book tour in an Airstream trailer that she's um, called The Book Stream. And so she's going it. around the country. She's coming to me with it. Yeah, she's going yeah. all over the country. Yeah, and Patty it's, and Mary Kay are going to yeah. do it. Yeah, crazy number of stops, like the number of miles and all that is printed on the bumper of the trailer and it's set up like a bookmobile and a coffee shop and her husband's going to be making coffee drinks. And so Brenda Novak will be joining us um, live on location from book tour from the book stream. So we'll all get to see that on the show, which will be great. Um, and awesome. then also on the season premiere on April 19th, after Brenda, we are welcoming back Alka Joshi, who you guys might have remember has been on the show before. She's incredible. Um, and she's joining us to talk to us about her latest, The Perfumist of Paris. Um, Very cool. Yeah, I'm psyched. And Lisa, another Atlanta girl, uh, April 26th, we're having Jocelyn Jackson. And Yay! Uh, I oh. freaking love Yay! I love her I too. Love her too. Um, I have some he, stories. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> She'd probably tell them all to you herself. She, I know she would. I know she would. <laughs> um, her new one is called With My Little Eye. And um, it's, I mean, the the blurbs are like a who's who. It's Karen Slaughter and I can't remember who else. I was looking at it earlier. I was like, whoa, I hope that book is set up to do really well. It's called With My Little Eye. And then we're also having Brenda Janowitz, who we've had on before, but her new one is called um, The Audrey Hepburn Estate. Um, I think the one before was a Grace Kelly ring. Is that right? Yes. Grace Kelly dress. Yeah, dress. Um, So yeah, so Jocelyn and Brenda Janowitz on April 26th. And then May 3rd, of course, since May 2nd is the on sale date for... The Secret Book of Flora Lee. Mm. May 3rd will be our launch celebration extravaganza for Patty's um, new book. Um, and <clears throat> God only knows what we have up our sleeves for I know. <laughs> the, the launch episodes. We have three of the Fab Four <laughs> launching books in this season. So we have three of those fantastic launch episodes to look forward to. And Patty's is first out the gate on May 3rd. Um, and then on May 10th, we have um, Jennifer Robson is coming back to talk to us about coronation year. You guys might remember she came on in the fall around the Queen's funeral to talk to us about the Royals and with the whole episode was about the Royals and, and all that. Um, but coronation year is finally out and May 10th, um, Jennifer joins us to talk about it and joining Jennifer on that episode is Martha Hall Kelly um, with her nice. new book. The Golden Doves, which oh, uh, her new book is so good. It looks amazing, it's and I so, see her so everywhere. Good. I think about her because do you guys remember when we asked her about the values around reading and writing growing up? She answered with that amazing, like she grew up in Martha's Vineyard, and they, she talked about how the rental houses would get rid of all their stuff and they would throw everything away. The the season renters, yep. and like people would throw away all these books, and she and her mom would go down there and just get all the discarded books and keep them. 
I don't know. <laughs> that always sticks in my head because I was like, that is an amazing story. And who just throws their stuff away like that? But um, okay. I know. Um, May 17th, finally, we're getting to have Abby Jimenez. I don't know if you guys are familiar with her. She's a rom com <laughs> author. Yeah, I know. She's like fabulous, like TikTok sensation. I feel like her books are just everywhere. Once you see the cover, you'll be like, oh, right, Abby Jimenez. If you haven't I'm read so her, excited. it's a great place to start with her new one, Yours Truly. Um, and then also uh, someone we've never had before, and I'm so glad to have her, is Megan Miranda. Um, That's going to be good. Yeah, right? Yeah. So her new book is called The Only Survivors. Um, so that's a thriller, kind of like a Mary Kubica vibe Ooh. to that and everything. Yeah. And then on the after show on May 17th, we are super lucky to have... Um, YA phenom R.F. Kwong. Um, she is out with her first adult novel, which is called Yellow Face. And um, everybody's really? buzzing about that book. Oh my God. Right. It's super buzzy. And when is it out? Um, you would ask me that. I think it's out in May. <laughs> I don't know that on so she's off the top of my head, but not out yet. Oh it's not out I yet. Know. She yeah. was doing an adult book. Yeah. So uh, what what's her YA series? It's some kind of YA fantasy, right? Oh gosh, Babel something Babel. Yeah, it's huge. Whatever it is, it's like yeah, a huge phenomenon. That is so cool. Yeah, I'm excited to have her. Um, and then May 24th is like literary uh, extravaganza with Kate Morton. <laughs> um, and I know Patty just did. Um, a virtual online event with Kate and said she is phenomenal and she cannot wait to have her on the show because um, the new book is fantastic as are all of her books and she was um, super engaging and she'll be an excellent guest and then we're also having Lee Smith um, God, she's, there's a blast from the past how about it I know that's great yeah um, she is like the literary matriarch of North Carolina Right. And um, I think she teaches at my alma mater, NC State. But um, really? her new book is, yeah, her new book is called Silver Alert. And it looks super fun. And um, the cover is really uh, vibrant and fun. Um, Silver Alert, Lee Smith. And then on the after show, friend of the show, Susan Meisner, is joining us um, to talk about her new book, Only the Beautiful. Um, and then we have one more episode in May, May 31st. And <laughs> super excited to welcome Meg Mitchell Moore to the show which you know I, we, she's got a, a bunch of um huge fans amongst the Fab Four and myself and um her books are really fun and the, her new one is called Summer Stage um and then on the after show we have an author writing team with a debut novel and their names are Audrey Beletza and Emily Hardin and they've written the most mm -hmm. adorable sounding book called Emma of 83rd Street which oh, I believe cool. is like a modern day take on Emma and it takes place in like the Upper West Side. Yes, yes, yes. I've heard about that. Yeah, that it looks, it just looks so her, cute. September. Yeah. Anyway, that is, challenge. that is April and May. And I wish I had covers. To, I just don't have everybody's books yet to hold up and show everybody. But stay tuned because we'll announce the full season with a link to the bookshop page and everybody's books are already up there. We have a full graphic showing all the covers and we'll get that out to everyone tomorrow, Thursday. Now we know what Meg did on her vacation. Yeah. <laughs> Spring break. <laughs> yeah, dark week is uh, that... <laughs> not, not so much a break. That is quite a lineup. Oh Ooh. my goodness. Right? Isn't wow. that exciting? That's some good stuff. I mean, woohoo. The chat well, is I don't even know where to start. It's an excitement. Oh, good. Yeah. Susie says, awesome lineup as always. Molly says, sounds like an amazing lineup. MKA says, she's a huge Morton fan and Lee Smith. Yes. Great. All right. Yeah. Well, Ron, would you um, would you like to share what's up with the podcast? What's up? What's coming what's up? up? What's yeah. up? What's up? What's <laughs> up? I would. Now y'all are going to be treating me like the holla thing. <laughs> I know. <laughs> holla, look, I say that all the time. I still say it. I don't, I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> so for some of these, I actually have visual aids. So I'm, oh, I'm good, good. excited to show these. Showing me because these are also my book recommendations. Because, 
one of the things about this podcast, even if I may not know a lot about some of these guests, boy, by the end, I'm in love with their work and uh, everything. About oh. But this first one turns out it was a friend of mine that I knew years ago in Jacksonville, Florida. And you know how on the podcast, we kind of stretch beyond fiction. And sometimes we do storytelling from other angles and places. Well, this episode's already in the can. And Mary Kay Andrews and I had the best time talking to Chef Kenny Gilbert about his new cookbook, Southern Cooking and Global Flavors. This book is amazing. What do you want to know about Kenny? Well, here's what you need to know. (laughs) <laughs> he was a contestant on season seven of Top Chef. He didn't win, but he was one of the consistent favorites of Long Sing, and it launched a lot of his career. Beyond that, he has become an ambassador around the globe and learned all of these different things that he brings into his cooking and his restaurants that I've been to. I've been to them. I've eaten his food. I'm so excited. But um, in, in awesome. here, he breaks it up into some Southern things. And uh, like he has a whole chapter on different kinds of mac and cheese, cool. mac and cheese, so Asian influence, this and that. Okay, wow. so one of the things on our podcast that we knew, but I didn't really know we were going to get this story, is how he became one of the preferred um, personal chefs for Oprah Winfrey. Oh, yeah! Wow. So. Get your hands on this book. It's a great cookbook. One of the things, and I, I I know I've seen this before probably, but he like goes through his recipes and at the end he's like the build. And then he's like putting everything together. So he walks you through the steps. It's really easy. It's very Southern. It's very um, globally influenced. He's he's fascinating. And um, can't that. wait for you all to hear this podcast episode. Awesome. I know. And the I next one <laughs> is, I hope, I hope that um, uh, that people have heard of him, but I think a lot of people may not have heard of this author yet, but he's written um, some big books like Kitchens of the Great Midwest and um, the this Lager Queen of Minnesota. He writes a lot about Minnesota and this is a male author and I've got, actually become a friend of his. So it was so cool to have him on and we would try to pretend that we weren't friends, but we were. Uh, <laughs> Christy, Christy and I, had the best time talking about Saturday night at the Lakeside Supper Club. What a great this book. All right, so if Roxanne Gay says this is a perfect book, you want to pay attention. You want to pay attention. We had the best time talking about him, and he actually recorded with us from where he lived in L.A., where they had just had that that awful storm where a tree fell on his house, and he was kind of, kind of stuck up into the part of their house to record with us that was uh, they were told to leave their home because they couldn't live there wow. until there was a lot of work done oh so my God he talks about the writing of the book I, I I don't there's very few male writers who can write women's characters very authentically and he's one of them and he's recognized for it and he's gotten blurbs from everywhere and it's a book you know grab this book out he's out May 8th oh April 18th April 18th so it's coming so, awesome now um and then uh, oh oh guess what's coming up i don't know i don't know which the episode is going to be but um the writer's block podcast is going to be celebrating its 100th episode that's ah 100 mm-hmm. you know how many episodes that is that's a lot i mean friends of fiction knows it's become like 300 or 500 i don't know but, but this is like there's yeah, a lot cheers, yeah yes Cheers to the 100th episode. Whichever one it is, we're going to celebrate huge. The next one I want to talk to you about is um, somebody I met a long time ago, but also was a friend of Patty's. We've already recorded this, and it's very uh, deep and meaningful. And you really think, um, you really think that, um, I don't know, it's just, oh, it's going to be a a book. I just fly through it. It's great. It's great. It's called The Fun Widow's Book Tour by Zoe Fishman. Oh, and I love that name. She's she's a she's Decatur. She lives in Decatur, oh. and she, the book is though about a writer who writes a memoir about the death of her husband and how she's past all that, and um, how people in the she's already a writer and kind of a mid level writer, and how it is with her family and her fans and friends. But it's an awful, 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 amazing, not awful, awfully amazing book about friendships and trying to start over and um, just just what the relationships in your life can do. Um, 
crazy thing about this is it's based on Zoe's own experience in her own life, losing her husband, oh. how, how oh. this book was kind of a catharsis for her. Oh, that's nice. But one of the things that's not in the book that we got her to talk about, and I'm not going to give anything away, is the story about how she met her husband. You have to tune in for that because that is crazy great story. And everybody's just going to go, oh, it's great. <laughs> it's a great episode. She's <laughs> lovely. She's wonderful. And Patty and I had a great time with her. That's awesome. Okay. Oh, that is awesome. All right. Last one. I'll just skip stop at April and we can come back to to May because these are a lot because of this show and tell, isn't it? So (laughs) Meg and I are recording a new episode this Friday that will be out on um, April the 28th. And it is with Women Are the Fiercest Creatures by Andrea Dunn. Oh, yeah. I love that. I love And the Daughters of Nantucket with Julie Gerstenblatt. Yeah, so we are going to have a great cool. conversation with the two of them. And it's them. really about, and they're, they take they take place in different time periods. Mm-hmm. They have there's three women in each one that are the focus, but it's all about their intertwining lives. So th- this whole episode is going to be about intertwining lives and fiction. So it's going to be really fun, and we're going to have a great time. Yeah, daughters of Nantucket is it cool. timeline or is it all historical, like all in the past? Um, it's all historical. It takes place during. Um, a great fire on Nantucket That's in right. 1846. The women in Nantucket, their husbands all go out. Uh, they're whalers and fishermen, and they're gone for a very long time. And it's about the women that are behind and how they kind of, um, how they, I won't say support, but I'll say interact with each other and yeah. how they how they survive um, their, their kind of their livelihood being out to sea for so long. And I'm excited for Women Are the Fiercest Creatures. Andrea yeah, Dunlop. Yeah, I used to work with Andrea Dunlop back at yeah. Double Day. Oh. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I'm dying to read it. And I, it sounds like it's like a modern day nine to five, right? Like um, these In three, a way. Yeah. yeah. Like these yeah. three women are, they band together against a, a, a bad male boss who sort of rewrites the company history to, to not give any credit to right. the females who helped him launch it. Yeah, um, it's which three reminds women me, kind it of just the whole think, vibe reminded me of nine to five. No. You know, you're right. He's he because he's a tech guru in the book, yeah. and, and they're they're all like kind of rethinking their relationship with him. Yeah, in the book, and well, do they get together and plot something? I don't know. We have to Ooh. tune in. Yeah, we have to <laughs> I don't know. So that's April. Nice. Wow. Awesome. But well, yeah. what's coming up <laughs> on the book club, you guys? So I know us. For April, we are doing, it'll be on April 17th. We're going to be doing the mostly true story of Tanner Ooh. and Louise right. by Connie Stokely. <laughs> and that'll be yeah. at 7 p.m. Eastern on our on the book club page. And for May, we are going to do the coronation year by Jennifer Robson. I do not have that book, but that'll be on May 15th at 7 p.m. And it is super, super, super yeah. timely with the King's coronation uh, right the corner. I write, it'll be right around that time. And we're gonna have a tea party and it's gonna be fantastic. So you don't wanna miss it. Awesome, tea yes. party, I love it. And we may be wearing pillbox hats, who knows? Oh, this I have to see. You <laughs> never know. <laughs> I might be putting on my Markle, put on a little Markle sparkle. (laughs) (laughs) I love that. Well, if I were to join in a pillbox hat, I'd end up being the queen consort. (laughs) (laughs) There you go. (laughs) Well, I tell you, I can't believe how fast our evening is passing, but we do not want to go too far without asking Meg to share what is going on with the Friends in Fiction live tour. Well, I'd be glad to. Let me see if I can share this graphic. Um, share screen. Um, oh boy. Let me just say while you're pulling that up, this is just such that the neatest thing that all four authors are going to be doing these joint appearances. It's going to be, everybody is so excited about it. Yeah. And every um, month, every month they'll be somewhere. 
Can you see that? Is it showing? We're seeing a list. Oh, your file. Yeah, we see your download list. Oh, why is that Ooh, happening? You guys are really getting a peek behind the scenes. Oh, Lord. <laughs> I'm kidding. <All> right. <laughs> stop share um how do i do that <laughs> why is it well hang on let's see um share screen if you okay, okay. while you're doing while i you're say doing... i say i found it you got it now yay there okay. we are all right look at that and thanks to someone who t messaged me to say i had misspelled huntsville on the first one i fixed that oh <laughs> <laughs> but so on april we 26th, love a grammar nazi yeah we are all going to columbus ohio and it's a big library um extravaganza uh yes. it's their 150th celebration of their um author talks series and the fab four are the guests of honor and that's going to be a big giant blast and then on awesome. may 1st is um charleston south carolina for the launch extravaganza for patty's book the secret book of floor lee uh, last I heard, there were fewer than 40 tickets left. So grab your tickets now before they sell out. And we are upgrading one lucky duck to a VIP ticket um, for anybody Ooh. who buys a general admission um, between now oh. and when it sells out. So grab your ticket and you could be the one who gets upgraded and gets to come to the cocktail party and the whole deal. Um, that is and awesome. And we should... Oh, sorry, Meg. No, we uh, we wanted to let everybody know too that Lisa and I are going to be joining the uh, yes. the Fab Four in Entourage in uh, Charleston. So we are real excited about that. Uh, <laughs> he and Meg will be, be there too. We'll be there. The and, fearsome foursome. Um, June sixth. The fearsome foursome. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, June sixth, we are all going to be in Huntsville, Alabama, for the big launch celebration for Kristen Harmel's book, The Paris Daughter. So exciting. Um, that's being hosted by Snail on the Wall, which is an indie there and a fabulous library, I think, who does uh, terrific events. And I, I, anybody who's in the uh, area, please come to that one. It's going to be fantastic. I have no doubt they're going to pack that place. Um, and then July 20th, we all return to one of our most favorite independent bookstores in the entire country, um, Oxford Exchange in Tampa, Florida. And that is for the launch extravaganza for Christy Woodson Harvey's uh, The Summer of Songbirds. Um, that is sure to be a fantabulous event. So um, go ahead and get your tickets for that one. The first five events listed, Columbus, Charleston, that's four, Columbus, Charleston, Huntsville, and Tampa. Those tickets are all on sale now and available for everybody. Um, if you check our bio and Instagram and our Facebook post, all the links are there. Um, so go ahead and grab your tickets. Oxford Exchange in Tampa is an insane location. It is just breathtakingly beautiful. They have a champagne bar. They have a tea wow. uh, tea bar. They have a home goods shop. They have a Warby Parker in there. It's multiple stories. There is a fountain. It, it's just a sight to behold. And that's oh, going to be a fantastic event. Um, tickets aren't on sale yet, but on August 1st, we're all going to be in Christie's hometown of Beaufort, North Carolina. And that is for a fundraiser for an organization called um, earlier.org, which is all about um, early detection of breast cancer. Um, and then on October 4th in Darien, Connecticut at the Darien Library, that will be the launch extravaganza for Bright Lights Big Christmas by Mary Kay Andrews. Um, so excited hey. to get everybody up to the Northeast. Can't wait. Yeah, it's going to be great. So anybody who's on um, a train line, uh, who's in the New York City metropolitan area, you can get to Darien. There's a train station in Darien. It's close to the library. So I know we have That's some folks who don't drive. It's easy to get there by public transportation. And we are super excited to um, to get our New York metro area friends in the mix on one of these live events. So that's the tour. Oh, bam. <laughs> ba bam. <laughs> ba bam. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Get your Charleston tickets now, folks. Yeah, there's not many be, left. Yeah, not you want to be in it for that VIP ticket. That's for sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Oh my goodness. Ron, did you fin did you finish up your um podcast announcements? Well, or did no, you have I did one more? One one more what? Batch. Well, Which one more. He May, I have another he batch. May and June. Uh, these are called quick. I don't. Oh, May all, and June. I'm sorry. All these books. I don't have all these books. So let's go into May a little bit. 
uh, in May 5th, we are going, and, and some these dates are subject to change because yeah, it depends around. on schedules of when we can record. But May 5th, Mary Beth Keen for the Half Moon. Oh. So excited. Uh, so, um, the 12th, the, Meg already mentioned this, Laura Hankin for the Daydreams. We're going to have yeah. a lovely chat with her about her book. On uh, the 19th of May, we're going to have a really special episode with a woman called Kristen Ness. She's an author. With, it's her debut book that she's written about loggerhead turtles. And I'm going to have a special guest co-host. And I guess she'll never know who that is. You will never <laughs> be able to guess who that is. It'll be forget <laughs> Everyone's it. Everyone's favorite never. resident turtle lady. Yes. <laughs> oh, yay. Mary yay. Alice Monroe will be joining me for that really special episode. It's going to be Ooh. wonderful. And oh, then, nice. oh, oh, I forgot to say, Mary Alice Monroe is also playing a yes. big part in the Charleston Friends of Fiction Live. So come see That's the right. band get back together. Yeah. 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 And <laughs> together. Okay. So the last one I'm going to talk about, well, first I'm going to say, in later after May, uh, if anybody read the book, The Push, Push. I have what not, but I've heard so many good yeah. things. One of my favorites. That author, Ashley Audrain, is going to join us for her new book, The Whispers. Date to be determined, but we are confirmed. But the last one I want to tell you about was like a big shock. Uh, this is already in the can because we wanted to do it early. And it is a um, podcast episode that Mary Kay and I did with one, oh, former FBI director, James oh, Comey. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. He started Mary writing Kay, fiction. Mary Kay could not stop raving about it. It's a, really? A, that's amazing. Is phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah. I texted Meg right away with, oh, this is great. So we, we, we probably, <laughs> oh, that again, Ron? Yeah. you know, <laughs> like kids do, <laughs> but we, we, I think we kind of expected to dislike the book and, and, but he was amazing. He was lovely. He was uh, personable. He was, it was, it's a great, great interview. And, um, yeah, I think people are going to just really dig it. It's going to be great. That's another oh. one that has blurbs from everybody under the sun, including uh, Michael Connolly, right? Um, Arlen Coben, Alifair Arlen. Burke, Doug, yeah. Douglas wow. Preston, Jeffrey yeah. Deaver, and this one, Nicole Wallace from MSNBC. That's right. Oh. Wow. They're all, they all blurbed this. They all read it. Well, anyway, apparently it's the, real deal. <laughs> it's the real deal. It's the real deal. I'm looking just... closer to, to read the... I'm looking closer to read the back. <laughs> yeah. It's not just some uh, Take a picture. retired guy <laughs> trying his hand at fiction. It's apparently really great. And um, this is what he wants to do with the rest of his uh, second chapter. So yeah. he's, and, he's here, it, he's and here to stay. And it's really good. As a novelist, yeah. It's really, amazing. Really good. And he, he creates memorable characters that I hope go on for another 10 books at least. Be awesome. Yeah. The chat's exploding with excitement around that oh, too. Cool. Oh, the they way. are? Oh, good. Oh, great. Oh, please get excited. Get yeah. excited. Well, was that it, Ron? I didn't want to jump in too early. Nope. That's good. That's good. Go. <laughs> okay. I just wanted to share. I, I guess I'm a little excited. I wanted to share our June book club pick, our own Patty Callahan Henry. Yay. And the secret book of Flora Lee, which we talked about earlier, but we're so excited about that coming up in June. Yay! Yep. On June Meg, 19th. Yes, June 19th. I'm so excited I forget all the details. June 19th, <laughs> 7 p.m. Eastern on the book club page. That's awesome. And we'll also a have one. a there'll also be a special guest on that episode, too. Oh, oh there you go with all your surprises. I know we just keep <laughs> secrets uh, galore from you ron <laughs> so meg would you like to share uh, the fantastic june lineup for friends yes, of fiction i would let me find it on my mess of a desktop here um <laughs> I have too many things open oh my god you guys so june 7th of course <laughs> is the launch extravaganza for kristen hormel's the paris daughter and uh you might remember the last launch celebration we threw for Kristen's mm -hmm. last book. Oh, very memorable. I mean, the woman wrote a musical, so I don't know what yeah. we have in store this time, but I am sure <laughs> it's going to be that. fabulous. Yeah. That's yeah. a tough We're one. That's a tough try one. to top it. Um, and then June 14th, we welcome back friend of the show, uh, Fiona Davis, 
and her new book, The Spectacular, which is about the history of the Radio City Music Hall and the Christmas Spectacular and the cover, I mean, yeah. yeah. That's gonna be an auto buy for so many people. I just, it looks phenomenal. And then on with Fiona will be Heather Webb. Um, her book, I believe, is already mm-hmm. out, but she, we're not having her until yeah. June fourteenth. But that book is. I have posted. it here somewhere. I have it here. Oh, somewhere. good. Uh, oh. That's super appealing to me too. It's called Strangers in the Night, and it's um, fiction based on Frank Sinatra and Ava Gardner. Yeah. Right. Yes. Ava Gardner. It's, yes. it's, it's it, one of the his covers. Is amazing. amazing. It, the cover is great. It's just uh, to me, it's so appealing. I'm like, yes, please give me some fiction that takes me away to the Rat Pack era. Yeah. Like, it just sounds so fun and glamorous. Um, and then on the after show will be uh, Victoria Benton Frank, who's Dottie Frank's daughter. And she, yes, she has written her first <clears throat> adult novel called My Magnolia Summer. Um, uh, that has a rave blurb from our own Patty and a bunch of other people. And it looks and it's sounds fantastic. And we can't wait to have Victoria. Fabulous. It uh, is? Oh, it, yeah, it, it's like a short little story on the side is one, one, one of the times that Dottie was here in town, they had just written Teddy Spaghetti. So their, their children's book together. And she said, she said, Victoria, Victoria's a writer. And I went, oh, oh. Uh-huh. now I know she is a writer. She yeah. really, uh-huh. really put her heart and soul into this. And it's, yeah. it's, it's great. Everybody loves her too. Um, and then June 21st, we're having Hazel Gaynor. Um, boy, do I love the cover of that new book. It's called The Last Lifeboat. I wish I had it to hold up, but I don't. Um, and then um, also we're having Catherine Ray, um, who another historical novel called A Shadow in Moscow. And then on the after show, we're having um, an author named Tanya Lowe. She goes by T.I. Lowe. And the book is called Indigo Isle. And I think it's about... Um, indigo farmers somewhere in the low country you don't have that here somewhere cool. too. i'm sorry i wish i'd known i would have that is a gorgeous cover um and that book sounds great that's june 21st and then june 28th um everyone might recall a book that caught fire last year called um nora goes off script by annabelle monahan yeah um so she has Just a new one coming one. this oh you did Oh, good. Uh-huh. She has a new one coming this summer and it's called Same Time Next Summer. So Annabelle Monaghan on June 28th. And then so on the after I just, show. I just finished read, reading that one. Did you? Is it good? Yes. If you have um, a past love and you want to yeah. feel nostalgic about it, oh. that is going to be the book for you. It's about the then and the now. <laughs> oh, and I where, love it. Where are you now and what could you have done differently um, in the past it's it looks so super good. fun i bet it's so gonna good. be huge the package is great the cover yep. you know it's just um and she's got a great audience teed up and ready from nor goes off script but um and then on the after show we have another writer pair um uh, mary huddleston and asher paul whose book piece of cake will be out this summer and that sounds super fun and juicy um and i, I bet they are going to be loads of fun so that's june yay pretty awesome (laughs) awesome well let's just go ahead and jump right into july uh brenda and i are excited because we have not announced our july pick we were going to do it on our happy hour on may 25th but we decided to go ahead and announce it so our july book club is the paris daughter by our very own Kristen harmel and it'll be right. on July. I'm not sure of the date. July. Uh, I can tell you in just a moment. <laughs> right, it's wrong. We haven't yeah, announced it and I don't know it. I can't. Did I you don't have it. Actually. in that beautiful box, the Paris daughter? Did yes. You oh, yes. yes. Unbelievable. I still oh. need to post my box. Yeah, I've the been graphics in it and just the oh yeah it's great all right it was just well, stunning yeah well, well we are really excited for that graphic we can go ahead and um if you want to start july ron with the um podcast i almost said book club um that, that's really as far out as i can talk about the podcast because there's still some gotcha 
asks out there that, that we don't have anything solid yet. I kind of gave you the, the Ashley can... Audrain thing, the writer of the mm-hmm. book. But we've got lots of great ideas, let me tell you that. Well, the Wednesday show is booked. I can give you the July rundown if you're ready for that. Okay, why don't you yeah. go okay. ahead and do that? All right. And let me plug one quick thing for the book club. Oh, yeah. Because we didn't do it. May 25th, we do have our happy hour with Ron Block and a special guest. Uh, <laughs> who might not uh, be? <laughs> At 7.30 p.m. <laughs> we never tell Ron. <laughs> no, no, we never do. No, nope. you know how much I love being surprised. <laughs> <laughs> and the July book club with Kristen is on July 17th at 7 p.m. Woohoo. Okay. Thank you, Lisa. All right. Meg, what's up for, for July for Friends and Fiction? So on July 5th, we have Marie Bostwick. Um, and her new book looks so good. The cover is to die for. It is called Esme Cahill Fails Spectacularly. That's that a great title. title. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and then we have um, Tara Shelton Harris, uh, and her book is called One Summer in Savannah. Um, Tara, oh, I believe. Yes. Tara? She's I, well, a librarian. I, I don't know her, know her, but she's a librarian. Yeah, nice. in, um, yes. In, in the Dothan, South Alabama. Area. Yeah, yeah, Dothan, Alabama. She runs a great event series out of the Dothan Library. Um, yep. And so, yeah, One Summer in Savannah with Tara Shelton Harris. And then July 12th, drum roll please, is the launch extravaganza for Christy Woods and Harvey's The Summer of Songbirds. Yay. Yay! Who knows what kind of guest stars and role playing and funny headwear we might have in store for the summer camp. Yeah, the first thing I thought of was funny hats. <laughs> um, I can't wait for that. You know it's going to be a blast. Um, <laughs> and July 19th, <laughs> as I tipped to earlier we have Stephen Rowley joining us on the Wednesday show which I cannot wait for yes. so he's the author of the Gunkle, and he's joining us to talk about his new one the celebrants um and then this is an author pair I can't believe we haven't had yet and I'm so glad we're having them Liz Fenton and Lisa Stanky and they um oh. they ran a website called Liz and Lisa for a million years they had an event series out in San Diego um La Jolla I believe at Warwick's um and their new book is called forever hold your peace and when i saw that title i thought how has that not, title not been used before because i feel like when they told their editor they wanted to call it that they probably jumped for joy when they realized it hadn't been taken because it's such a great title anyway yeah. so for lisa and lisa with forever hold your peace that's july 19th and then the season finale is on july 26th and i do not know what we have up our sleeves for that all i know is that we have rock star superstar guest Ellen Hildebrand joining us for the season finale and there's been lots of talk about how to make that super fun and some type of summer extravaganza so um get your pre-orders in for the five star weekend which is her new one and July 26th we'll be celebrating that with her and celebrating the end of our summer season on July 26th with Ellen yay and you know that they're filming her novel, The Perfect Couple, right yes. now. Yes. God, pretending it's yeah. Nugget. Yeah. And Nicole Kidman. I know. I know. It's amazing. And the cast I, is so good. The cast is amazing. And I saw, you know, um, Ellen's been fielding all sorts of questions from local Nantucketers who are asking, like, why they change this and why they change that. And I, the one thing that I, I, struck me as interesting was the character Nicole Kidman plays is supposed to be named Celeste. But they had to change mm-hmm. her name for the show because um, Nicole Kidman played Celeste in Big Little Lies. Oh, oh, Big Little Lies—that's the one, right? Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Sir, yeah. the yeah. Moriarty book. Yeah, yeah. So wow. they're like, you don't want people to get confused and think she's playing the same character in two different shows. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah that wow. makes sense. Yeah. Oh wow. What a great lineup. Oh, oh my right? goodness. I know. It's amazing. <laughs> oh, goodness. Well, I would like to do a quick giveaway if we could as we're Ooh, nearing the it. end of our hour. And uh, Ron, after I do the um, question and we get our answer, you can you can be our banner and display what the winner will receive, but not before. An autographed picture of me. No. <laughs> well, everybody wants that. Now oh, the chat cool. is. Exploding. That's right. <laughs> now you spoiled it. 
<laughs> okay, I'm going to try to ask this properly. We the our, the uh, winner of this uh, the the first well, what, Lisa is going to be our judge, so she can <laughs> choose a random winner or the first correct <laughs> answer. But in we're looking for an author's name as a response in a prior novel by this author, Piper Parish was the main character and she lived in a small town in the middle of the Chesapeake Bay and everything was going really well for Piper except for one thing her husband was dead and she was pretending that he wasn't what author am I talking about man I love that book Gone with the Wind Does anybody know <laughs> yeah it sounds just like Gone with the Wind there's a bit of a delay <laughs> For us. Oh, so, okay. Ooh. While we're waiting for answers to come through. Oh, wait, hold on. I think I have the first answer. I was going to say, I Leslie, can give another. Leslie Bodeman. Colleen Oakley is the answer. And Leslie, you were the first one. So congratulations. What does she win? What do you win? A signed oh. picture of Ron and. <laughs> A signed copy of the mostly true story of Tanner and Louise. Love it. Just in time Yay. for the book club. Yay. I had her sign so it last night so we could give it away tonight. So it's a signed copy. Love that. Love it. Yay. So Leslie, send us your um, DM me or Brenda and send us your address. And we will make sure to get that right out to you. And congratulations. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and it's 8.02, so we've officially gone into the after show. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the after show. <laughs> congratulations. We're in after show now. Well, <laughs> I have stick one with question. us, guys. <laughs> one question from um, the chat for the four of us. Molly would like to know, what are our favorite hobbies outside of books and reading? Ron, do you want to kick us off? Oh dear, cooking. Oh yeah, cooking. you do. Like I, I, I'm. Yeah. I love to cook, and I get to uh, review cookbooks, and I get to try out the recipes, and like, oh my god, it's awesome. What about you, Meg? Oh, for me, well, this winter we did a ton of skiing, so I'm going to say skiing and travel. Um, you know, we had two fantastic trips. One was out to Big Sky, Montana, and the other one was to um, uh, Lake Tahoe in California, which I don't know if you watch the news, you can see they have just been clobbered with snow and um, yeah. so much so that they've actually had to close the mountains a couple of times because it's too much for them to even handle. But we hit it at such a sweet spot and it was so much fun, um, amazing conditions and just absolutely beautiful there. So skiing oh. for me. Nice. Brenda? Sounds like sounds like it was fabulous, Meg. Well, for me, it's it's also partly travel, I guess, but also I love watching figure skating. And um the last thing I went to was a whirlwind trip to Nashville to see uh Scott Hamilton's um oh I can't remember what it's called, but it's a benefit for his cancer foundation. Oh um, yeah, yeah. And hoping to get to U.S. Nationals in January, but not sure. But I just love it. It's just magical to watch it in person. Oh, I love that. Awesome. It makes me think of that picture of you in your skating costume that we've seen. I know. <laughs> but let's forget that. That was poor judgment on my part. Oh, no, we're that. giving away an autographed <laughs> copy of that. I, I had it. a feeling that was your answer. So let me pull it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh yeah moving right along Lisa what is um for me my hobbies I've always loved so many forms of entertainment whether it's acting I'm really into the film community here in Georgia so I love going to films and advanced screenings and going to the Atlanta Film Festival and supporting my friends that worked so hard on the movies and tv shows that you guys watch so um I'd say movies, cocktails, <laughs> and I like to dance too. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, good. Like, good. That was a great things? question. I yeah, that. thanks, was a good Molly. Question. Thanks, Molly, for that. 
Oh my goodness. I think goodness. it's almost We're time at. to wrap up, guys. I know. It's, it's almost Bye. time for our fearsome foursome to end, except Ron is holding up another wonderful book. If we you haven't totally read <laughs> Earth's the Right Place for Love, get your hands on this book. We had a lovely, lovely podcast episode with Elizabeth Berg. He's um, just awesome. one of the kindest, nicest authors. And these books are like a great escape from the world. All of her in that series with the Arthur True Love is just. And that podcast episode's already out, right? It is. It's out yes. um, a few weeks ago, but it's our Arthur True Love when he was 16 and how he mm -hmm. became the way he was. So oh, I love that. It's just like phenomenal. Um, oh, I, have, I can't wait. I have two things to plug if we don't. Go ahead. Oh, yes. Yes. Yes, yes, so, yes. All right. Let me let me attempt the screen share again. So I'm so good at it. Um, <laughs> Keep going. Right. This I'm really excited about, you guys. Uh, okay, hang on. Diane bum, bum, says she bum. loved meeting Oops. Elizabeth Berg in Cleveland. He Ooh. did too. We had such a great time. Cool. All right, we have oh, new yes. swag, you guys. We have new swag. So um, we're calling these the name, uh, the, the name wear, name wear. Friends in Fiction name wear, right? So <laughs> you'll see it. the cute design has MK and Patty and Christy and Kristen and me because the community is nothing without all of you. And um, so the shirts, they're available in um, two different kinds of short sleeve shirt, uh, several colors. There's a, a hoodie, hooded sweatshirt and a crew neck sweatshirt. And there's black, there's light gray, there's... Um, there's like a nice blue, there's charcoal. So um, we're gonna share this link, but we're doing these through Bonfire and it's a limited sales window. So we're there, you can only order now through April 23rd. And um, I believe these come in like extra small through 5X or something like that. So there's a huge variety of sizes, colors, short sleeve, long sleeve, whatever you want, um, but it is a limited sales window. So, um, I'll get that link shared on the Facebook page ASAP and um, hopefully you guys can scoop those up while supplies last. They um, are awesome. Isn't that I'm fun? so excited. <laughs> I love it. I think they're fun. And they come um, in unisex and all the different sizes. I think they're beautiful. Love it. Okay. Now, one other thing to plug before we go off. How do I do this? Here we go. You're doing great, Nick. I'll try. I'm trying. <laughs> uh, oh, go. yes. The subscription box. So um, get your orders in now. The first shipment goes out in less than a month. Um, so Patty's book goes on sale May 2nd. And when you sign up for this box, it's $125 all in. It's available only at Booktown um, right here on, at my, my local indie at the Jersey Shore in Manasquan, New Jersey. And um, for a flat rate of $125 all in, you get four signed first editions. Um, and then the first shipment is the awesome um, kitchen towel. You see, oh my God, that Kristen's book just fell on me. <laughs> <laughs> um, you get the awesome kitchen towel you see there that says dinner can wait. It's time for friends and fiction. Uh, so that includes, the price includes shipping tax and all four shipments and you get four delightful shipments in the mail. And this way you ensure that you have everybody's brand new 2023 book um, just as they're landing. So the great gift idea. Oh, that's, I think yeah. Mother's Day is coming up. Sure yes. Is. That's a steal. Yes. Yeah. It's a good one. Exactly what I was thinking. Great gift possibilities mm -hmm. for yourself and for someone else. <laughs> uh, one for each. Absolutely. <laughs> Well, one other thing we wanted to say quickly is to remind everyone about the 2023 reading challenge that we're hosting on the book club page, which is head up by our reading challenge guru, Anissa Armstrong, mm -hmm. and she reads every book that ever comes out. And I don't know how she does it. <laughs> I don't either. I don't either. I told her she's a triplet. And I really think that's the case because she goes everywhere. She's at everything and she reads all the, I don't know. I don't know. She's a triplet, I'm convinced. So <laughs> I think I met one of them too. I think I met one of her twins by mistake, but we'll go, we'll come back to that another day. So it's another show. <laughs> every month we have a challenge or a different prompt. And for April, we're doing a book under 200 pages. And 
we have posted some suggestions on the page, but I I would like to say, since Are You There, God, It's Me, Margaret is coming out oh April 28th in theaters, and I was lucky enough to go to an advanced we screening so this week. Review. And it was amazing that that is a good book to read for this challenge or reread it before the movie comes out. Um, I can't wait. Yeah. I'm shocked that's under 200 pages. I don't remember I that. I didn't know that either, but yeah. it is. I yeah, think so many older books are super short. Like when you look at yeah. older books, like Great Gatsby and um, right. Petra and the Rye, they look like of mice and men. Yeah, I know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was so Great surprised. Gatsby is a good like, one. It's a, for the it was a middle grade. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No. Wow. Well, thank you, thank you, Lisa. I tell you, I do not want to play uh, book Jeopardy with any of you guys. I'm, let me just say that now. <laughs> 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 I'm gonna throw in the towel before we even start but oh my goodness what a great night of of books and this was fun yeah friendship and um and sharing it's just been a great night and thanks so much for for everyone for watching and for yeah. you guys the fearsome foursome right to be on. back for the takeover yeah. And shout I can't out. wait to see you in Charleston. Say shout out to the Fab Four. I hope you guys are enjoying yes. your night off. Yeah. Enjoy your night off. And, and uh, uh, three cheers for our four founders, um, Mary Kay, Kristen, Christy, Patty. Definitely. Love you guys. Definitely. Yes. In fact, I <laughs> we, would say let's. Th this would be nothing without them. This would be nothing. Exactly. Yes. So cheers, cheers to the Fab Four. Mm -hmm. I'm almost out of gin, guys. I made it yeah. through. Emergency. Hit You're still sitting button. upright. Look at that. <laughs> oh. Oh my God. I, that almost came out. That oh yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, thanks for a wonderful evening. And we will see you on the next takeover. That's right. Thanks for tuning in. Everyone, take care. Thank you. Good, Good night, night, everybody. Here's some force. Good night. Uh, here's some force. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.